Hello everyone, my name is Lori Hustis and I work in the C2000 Applications Group at Texas Instruments in Stafford, Texas. Today I'd like to give you a short technical overview of the Control Law Accelerator, or CLA. First I'd like to explain what the CLA is. The CLA is an independent 32-bit floating point math processor. The CLA operates independently of the main CPU. It has its own register set, memory bus structure, and processing unit. The CLA can also access directly registers on the device without intervention from the main CPU. These include the EPWM, the comparator, and the ADC result registers. One important feature of the CLA is its ability to read an ADC result just in time. And what I mean by this is as soon as the conversion is done and the register updates, the CLA can grab that value. On the next slide, I'd like to expand some of the features of the CLA. I just mentioned that the CLA can read the ADC result register just in time, and it can access registers on the device, including the EPWM registers. This makes it ideal for executing time-critical control loops in the system. If you take a look at the system on this slide, you'll see there's an analog signal coming into the device. The ADC is sampling that signal, and usually the C28X would do a control algorithm on that signal and output the PWM waveform that you see here. But once we bring the CLA into the system, the CLA can take over that control algorithm, leaving the main CPU to perform other tasks. The CLA is interrupt-driven. Interrupt it responds to the ADC, EPWM, and CPU timer zero interrupts. In addition, the main CPU can start a CLA task via software. The CLA is fully programmable, so it will do exactly what you want it to do. It's programmable using 32-bit floating point instructions. On the next slide, I'll explain what system benefits these features can bring to your application. So remember I said that the CLA can sample the ADC just in time and it has a short interrupt response time? Well, this leads to a reduced sample to output delay. What this will give your system is a faster system response time and the ability to have higher megahertz control loops. In addition, the CLA provides support for multi-channel loops, for example, multi-phase, multi-frequency loops within the system. Another benefit of the CLA is now you have two processors in the system. One thing that they can do is check on each other. For example, the CLA can check on the C28X, making sure it's doing its job correctly, and the C28X can check on the CLA to make sure that it's doing its job correctly. In this, you can add robustness to your system. In addition, the CLA is programmable in floating point. Floating point is inherently easier to program than fixed point. You can remove some of the saturation and um, scaling issues that you have with fixed point. In addition, you don't have overflow and underflow sign inversion problems. So floating point is also easier to test, and since it's easier to program, you can develop your code faster. And finally, remember that since the CLA can take over the time-critical control loops, the CPU won't be as bogged down and it can do other tasks such as diagnostics and communication. In the next slide, I'd like to demonstrate this last point further. As you see here, I have the C28X running at 60 megahertz. Notice that the C28X is constantly taking interrupts and it's very busy. It's really overloaded. But if I introduce the CLA into the picture and offload some of the tasks to the CLA, you notice that the C28X is not quite as busy anymore and it can do more tasks. Now the CLA also goes to sleep when it's not doing any work. If you notice here, it's interrupt driven, it gets an interrupt, it does some work, goes to sleep, gets an interrupt, does some work, goes to sleep. 
It's also very power efficient since it goes to sleep and it takes less power than the main CPU, so your total power requirements go down. In the next slide, I would like to talk about debug and assembler support for the CLA. The CLA and the main CPU code can reside in the same project. The assembler will know that you have CLA code because it has its own mnemonic set. Typically, your CPU code will do all system initialization and it's programmed in a high-level language such as C or C++. The CLA, on the other hand, is fully programmable in assembly. To assemble your CLA code, you must first tell the assembler that you have CLA. To do this, you use the CLA support switch, which is available in CodeGen 5.2 and later. In the next slide, I'll talk about emulation support for the CLA. CLA debug is integrated into Code Composer Studio version 3.3. In addition, it will be integrated into CCS 4.0. The CLA and the main CPU can be debugged independently. You can halt, step, and run the CLA independently of the main CPU and vice versa. In addition, both the CLA and the main CPU are debugged through the same JTAG port. This means that there's no need for additional scan chain setup or emulation controllers. Well, I hope that I've sparked some interest in the C2000 Controller Accelerator and Piccolo. If you would like to get more information on Piccolo or the CLA, please visit the TI website at www.ti.com slash piccolo. Again, my name is Lori Hustis, and I hope to see you again soon. Thank you.